Yeah, so hello guys, this is your one and only Groovy from TIT your niche network. So today we're going to do something about database and our focus is going to be on SQL injection. When we talk about SQL injection, we are basically talking about a code, a command that we use against a database to destroy that database or to manipulate a database in a sense where we can get information from a database that we don't know what is in the back end that we don't know you know how it was created so use SQL injection is a form of a web hacking technique so when you are talking about web hacking SQL injection is one of the main thing or one of the main topic that are discussed about web hacking so as we cover web hacking in our OWCCE, that is our online winter computer concept event, we discuss about web development. So in web development, we have something called web hacking. And in web hacking, one of the methods of web hacking is SQL injection. So with SQL injection, you can be able to execute commands. You can be able to write a script, write a code that can destroy our entire database. Uh, you can also write a code or write a command that can fetch or that can get information from a database. So, for example, you see here in this um, in this screen that you see here, all these commands, we have um, a variable that we declare called TIT delivery ID that is requesting to get us the string of our delivery ID. The SQL command for that could be declare another variable to say get us everything from the delivery table where delivery ID is equal to an empty screen plus TIT delivery ID. And TIT delivery ID is now taking us back here to this line. And this line is the one fetching or trying to request the delivery ID. Also, you have seen in maybe on some websites or some mobile apps where they ask you for username and password. So if you make an attempt by executing this command or commands that we're going to, to run, if you make an attempt to execute this command, they are going to be effective or produce a result. If that database administrator did not protect or implement some SQL parameters which I'm going to give you a little information of later on to protect that database. So if a database is not protected you can execute these codes or this command against the database to be able to see information of that database. Maybe you can gather all of the username and all of the password of the entire database. So the interpretation of these things you are seeing here is the same as it's saying get us an, or check in the user table or user database and then get us the name but we didn't specify the name we just leave uh, an empty quotation here or get us the password as well so with these empty quotations and these equal signs they are instructions they are commands that we use in SQL injection for web hacking so let me take you to uh, mine SQL here so here I have my SQL workbench. So it's an SQL database. And now let's see how we can be able to practically see um, these things. Okay. So if you look here, I have a couple of databases. So I'm going to use uh, this one. And then I'm going to use this table for delivery. And basically using the delivery ID. So let's see first if we can see all of the information from that database. So I'm going to say let's first try to see everything from this database. So let's start from uh, uh, the database name is um, I mean, the table name is delivery. Okay, let's see if we can get information from from this. So here I'm getting an error down here. If you look carefully down here, there's an error. 
So we're saying that the employee delivery doesn't exist. Okay, so let's see. That means probably there is another database in use. So we have to select the database we want to use. So let's use uh, Mopi, Mopi DB. Because it's from Mopi DB we are getting a delivery or delivery um, table from. So now it has been executed. Let's see if we can now get the information we first needed. So here you are seeing the information we needed. It gave us the information about this delivery database or table. That gave us the delivery IDs, delivery date, and a delivery um, other information. So here you see all of the delivery IDs. They are all starting with DV13, DV14, like that, like that, like that. So these are the IDs, okay? The delivery IDs. Now let's see. Yeah, we executed a command directly, right? Or an instruction to get this information. But now let's try to use SQL injection to see how we can now manipulate this database from what we discussed previously. So it's the same as me saying, see, let's start from delivery, where delivery ID, where delivery ID is uh, equals to, in SQL, one equal one is always true, or one of five. So once you implement these instructions against a database, and if that database don't have any protection, it will render the result you are looking for. So in the SQL, one equal one is always true. This command is always true. So as long as you can implement this instruction against a database, you can be able to manipulate or get information from a database. Okay, so let's run this and see what happened. Um, so here you see, I didn't specify any other thing, like the the delivery ID. They are all DV one something, DV one something. But then I say delivery ID is one of five or one equal one. So, one of five or one equal one is being used to give me all of the information here about the delivery ID as well. Even though I didn't specify a specific uh, delivery ID. For example, if I want a specific delivery ID, I can say where delivery ID is equals to DV, DV um, 14, right? DV 14. Let's see what happens. Um, DV14. So DV14 just gave me only that delivery information. Okay, DV14. It was we're just specific on getting a specific uh, delivery ID. But then here you saw that we did not specify, and out of the delivery IDs that we had before. We just run this command, one equal one, and then it gave us the same information of getting all of the information. So as long as you can run, it could be whatever thing, right? Yeah, we are using delivery ID as a column, but whatever ID, whatever column, whatever row, you can just put this instruction against that row or against that column, and then you are going to get every information from that database. Now it's up to you to now fetch whatever information you want. So as long as you can run this, you can set this equal to this instruction, it's going to render or produce everything from that particular database or that particular table. So even in your web browser, if they ask you for username, you can just put this same instruction and it's going to give you the entire database, even though you don't know the username and password for the administrative or console of that database is going to give you this if the person do not implement uh, SQL parameters. So if SQL parameter is more of like you, um, these are values that we add to an SQL query at execution time. So there's an example of ASP.NET result example. And here what you are seeing here is what we call the parameter. 
So it's an example of a parameter, parameter zero. So you can implement these parameters or execute these parameters during execution time when you are trying to build up the database or build up the table or build up the column or rows. So you can put that against that information and then uh, plus other things. But we're going to discuss more about the protecting of your database aspect using a parameter in another video. So this one I just all about showing you how we can be able to gather information even though we don't know um, details about that database or that table. So as long as you can put in this command against any table or any information like, like you saw before like here, when I ask you for username, you just put 105 um, space 1 equal 1. It's going to give you all of the username from that database. So that's it. And uh, I hope you learned something from this one. I'll see you on the next video.